The animal world is full of strange traditions. Today, you'll learn why storks throw their babies out of the nest, why rabbits bury their offspring, and why some animals eat poop. And wait till you hear about some of the downright strange behaviors that our little pets exhibit and what they mean. Let's start with why mother rabbits sometimes bury their babies alive underground. Believe it or not, the intentional killing of offspring is practiced by many species. But with rabbits, the reality is a little different. Rabbits do bury their offspring, but they do it to protect them. Mother rabbits don't want to attract predators to their babies, so they mostly leave them on their own, hidden and camouflaged. But how can the babies survive underground without oxygen? Well, it's not because baby rabbits can hold their breath for hours. It's that mother rabbit doesn't cover the hole very tightly. There are little air pockets that let air go freely into the shelter and the little rabbits can breathe. And this is only a temporary measure. Mothers return and feed their babies twice a day. Interestingly enough, if one of the baby rabbits dies, the mother may eat it. This isn't because rabbits suddenly become carnivorous. It's just that a dead rabbit will quickly begin to stink. So the mother will try to do everything possible to eliminate the sources of attention to the burrow. Baby rabbits are very weak when they're born. Any change in temperature can be fatal to them. The mother rabbit plucks her own fur and covers the nest to make a warm, comfortable place for her newborns. She also uses grass, leaves, and straw to insulate the nest and hide their babies. Despite all these protections, most bunnies end up dead by their first birthday. In fact, about 44% of rabbits die in their first month of life, and 80% of them die in the first year. This is why they produce so many offspring, otherwise, they would just die out. If you find a rabbit hole with little rabbits in your lawn, let it be. Baby rabbits found alone in a nest are usually not orphans. If you disturb the nest, the mother will immediately abandon her children. It's because she will think the babies are dead and it isn't safe to be around. Let's now look at this video, where a mother stork throws her baby out of the nest. This is a very normal behavior in storks and many other families of birds. Of course, they do not do this because they don't like their kids, and not because of some mental disorder. When a stork parent realizes that she just doesn't have enough food for all her babies, she gets rid of one or two. More often than not, they throw away the weakest baby and keep the strongest one. Such behavior is fairly common in many animals. If a mother bear gives birth to three cubs, two of which are unhealthy or too weak, then it's highly likely that she will kill and eat the weaker cubs. This will not only give the mother energy in the form of a calorie boost, but it will also leave her with fewer cubs whom she can then nurse better and provide for. Hamsters, on the other hand, eat their babies for crowd control. Research has shown that mother hamsters with nine pups will eat two cubs on average. When scientists have tried adding two or more cubs to the litter, the mother ate four of the cubs instead. Removing a few of the cubs of the litter, though, stopped the cannibalism. This suggests that hamster moms eat their young to keep their litter small enough so she can provide and care for the cubs. Even lions aren't an exception. When a male lion in a pride changes, the new leader kills the cubs of his predecessor. It has been well reported in the wild that male lions have no interest in raising another lion's offspring and they do not want to spend energy and resources to ensure that other lions' genes will be passed on. So they prefer killing the cubs or taking them out of the pride. Also, female lions will not be receptive to mating while they are nursing, so killing the cubs enables the new male lions to reproduce. But these are all trivial compared to how pandas treat their babies. Pandas are funny and cuddly, but they are also almost extinct, or rather endangered species, and there are several reasons for it. One of the main reasons is how mother pandas care for their babies. Interestingly enough, pandas rarely reproduce, but when they do, they often give birth to twins. And then the mother panda is faced with a choice, which of the cubs to care for and who to leave to die. Yep, you heard that right. The babies are so small that they can't move or hold themselves up. A mother must constantly clutch her newborn to her chest to keep it warm and allow it to feed. It's difficult to care so intensively for one cub, let alone two. But people have found a solution. When a mother panda gives birth to twins in captivity, keepers remove one of the cubs, tricking the mother into thinking she only has one cub. The twins are then switched up to 10 times a day to maintain the single baby panda illusion. One of the cubs stays with the mother, while the other is kept in an incubator and fed on formula milk, and the mother panda believes it. 
This way, both the babies survive and the mother is happy. Even our little pets exhibit behaviors you may find strange. Cats, for example, can transform from cuddly animals to weird creatures in a second. Have you noticed that they suddenly open their mouth and look around confused? What's that? Are they in some sort of shock? Turns out, it's a biological reaction known as Fleeman response. It's a way of smelling and tasting the air. Cats have special odor receptors in the roof of their mouths. They keep their mouth open to get a better sense of certain smells. Of course, this phenomenon leads to a comical situation. And this behavior isn't limited to domestic cats. Many other mammals, including lions and horses, perform this action too. We humans haven't learned to understand the language of animals. That's why their behaviors generate many questions. Dogs or rabbits, for example, may snack on their own feces. But there are logical reasons for their poop-eating behavior. Dogs want clean spaces to play and live as much as you do, and their most obvious way to rid the environment of waste is by eating it. When a mother gives birth to her puppies, they don't know anything about using the bathroom, so a mother will eat the puppy's feces to keep their new home clean. It's nature's way of keeping the puppies free from disease and a mother's way of protecting her young. Eating fecal droppings is also a way of obtaining key nutrients. While we may view poop as dangerous, it's not as scary as we think. While eating poop from sick animals can be an issue as it can contain viruses, parasites, and bacteria, healthy poop often contains harmless bacteria, water, dead cells, and some undigested food. Poop can be nutritious and help reset the gut bacteria to healthy levels. Believe it or not, some doctors even prescribe poop pills to those who have a hard time to combat gut infections. When a bunny appears to be bathing their belly and they come up chewing, they are actually eating their poop. Don't try to stop them though, as they are actually re-ingesting their feces to get the nutrients they need. Animals behave in ways in which we don't understand, and we often tend to find human reasons to understand their behaviors. You probably have noticed that dogs kick back their feet after pooping. You may think the dog is trying to cover up its urine and feces, but it isn't. By scratching the ground, the dog is releasing the pheromones located in the scent glands of its feet. This is the main way a dog marks its territory. The dog wants the other dogs to know that this is his area. And while you think that a dog might be sniffing another dog's poop, they're actually sniffing the pheromones another dog has left behind from kicking the dirt. This is a unique form of communication where your dog will tell another dog if they sense danger or even let them know about their sexual availability.